Good morning, everybody. I hope everyone's well. I'm still not quite used to this Facebook Live gig, so I'm trying to just work out how to make people aware of the fact that I'm doing this. And off we go on the tag chain to see who wants to watch. That's a few of you up there now. Cool. Sorry if I missed you out. Just tagged a few people at random just to see um, what was what. Uh, yes, cool. Right. Uh, so this morning, I'm going to brew some coffee, and I'm going to talk, and I'm hopefully going to make people feel happy. Um, it's a beautiful, bright morning here in the in Pennine, West Yorkshire. Oh, shirt, shirt, bants, here we go, there we are, the shirt, lovely. Uh, beautiful, sunny morning here in Pennine, West Yorkshire, cold and crisp, as you often get at the end of March. Nothing drastically unusual about that, and it's a really nice day. So, today, I'm going to be brewing some filter coffee from home, uh, and I'm going to use an automatic filter machine. It's a fairly fancy one, you might not have one like it, but the same basic principles apply to whatever kind of percolator you've got at home. You might be able to use some of these hacks, you might not, but let's have a go at it, see what you can find. Good morning, Mr. Gregory, nice to see you. Good morning, Alex. You can't hear me. Speak, oh, sorry, no, I'll turn the volume up, I don't think I'll do anything, but let's try it. There we go, right, here we go. So, let me spin this camera around. And apologies for the state of my kitchen. You might notice a Christmas card on the back there, but that's fine. What I've got here is a Wilfer. Wilfer is a dead good filter brewing machine. Uh, I really like them. They've got a lot of really positive features. For example, this really cool drip stop feature, which closes the bottom of your cone off. It has a slightly heated hot plate underneath, so your coffee stays warm. But don't leave it on there too long, because it'll be minging. It's got a nice finish, it's kind of brushed stainless, so it's pretty. You can also get it in shiny black plastic if that's more your aesthetic. Um, and so I'm just gonna brew a little bit of coffee with this. What I've done is I've ground this using my Malkernig Vario. I've had this for about five years. And I never use the weight function on it because it's never been that reliable. So I weigh my coffee in advance and then I grind it. I've done that before so that it's not too uh, loud for everybody. So today, uh, I'm gonna brew up a little bit of coffee. What I've done is I've already filled my water tank I've got about three quarters of a litre in there, and I'm not especially precise with that. Uh, the lines on here are pretty consistent, and as long as I just follow that and do what I'm supposed to, it's usually pretty good. Um, so, I put about 750ml of water in there. I don't tend to filter my water here, because we live at the top of the Pennines, we're only 10 foot from the sky, and the water here is pure and clear and delicious. Onto my filter paper, I've already pre-folded this and put it in, and I've just poured some hot water through it. What this does is it rinses any papery flavour out, and it opens up the pores so that it's easier to pass the coffee through there when you need to. Next, I'm going to put my coffee in. And there's no real precision to how it sits in there, it's just kind of going to sit there pretty flat. Um, and at the moment, my drip stop is closed, so there's no way of it dripping out. Swing the arm around and press the button. People sometimes ask me which button. It's the button. And there's a little light that goes on, which is lovely and cool. So, this is going to start brewing now, and I'm going to do some fiddling about, and then I'll talk to you a bit more about the coffee. What I would say is, if you have got a local coffee roaster who is still delivering a, a, a delivery service, you should probably use them, because I'm sure they would benefit from the help. So I'm doing this for the benefit of the entire UK coffee industry to try and help people um, sell some coffee and you know help all of our coffee businesses out there across the UK. Good morning, Mr. Gower. Nice to see you. Right, Wilfer has kicked into life. We're now getting into the bloom phase, which I talked to you about uh, the other morning. So what I've got is my trusty Hario bamboo paddle, and I'm just stirring my grinds in the cone. Now, this might not be possible for all of your home brewers, but if you can do this, it will certainly help. So this is getting all of your coffee evenly wet at the same time. Also, with the drip stop closed, it means that the water is staying in there and not flowing out. Now that that is done, I'm going to use this little toggle down the side here to open the drip stop all the way up so the coffee can start pouring out. And then I'm going to slide the cover on and wait for it to finish brewing, which will only be a couple of minutes at this point. Right, spin that around. Hopefully you guys can now see me. Uh, this is this morning's effort on the shirt. Um, it's a uh, kind of a maroon number, which uh, reminds me of my secondary school blazer. Um, and big shout out to all you secondary school uh, leavers who are going to go to school today and you don't know when you're going to go back. Hang in there, you'll be okay. So this is a nice flowery number, a little bit of uh, a, a sort of a monochrome print on it. 
I quite like it. I think the small pattern's kind of... It's a little bit like dazzle camouflage. If, you, if you're looking at a battleship coming along and it's got dazzle camouflage, you're never quite sure how big the battleship is. And that's, that's why I like these shirts. Um, so this coffee comes from a local roaster. Uh, they're good friends. They're extremely good people. And I'm very, very pleased that I've got some of this coffee in at the moment. What it is, it's an Ethiopia Yerga Chef. Uh, it's 100% Arabica. And it is aged in Kentucky bourbon barrels. This is an exciting thing. And it's quite new, actually. It's not been, it's not been going around for very long. And a few people have done it. Uh, but this is a really, really well done example. I've had a few of these. I had a Mexican coffee that was aged in tequila barrels a couple of years ago. And it was horrible. Um, it was old, nasty coffee that had been stuck in a barrel and just tasted like ferment defects. It wasn't very nice at all. Morning, Josh. Morning, Matt. Nice to see you. Um, so this, this idea of putting coffee beans in a barrel to get the flavour of the barrel, I understand quite well. Uh, with whiskies, this is basically what whiskey tastes like. Whiskey, when you put it in the barrel, doesn't really taste of a great deal. Mostly kind of peat and DOE when it goes in the barrel. Um, once it ages, you get the flavour of the oak, and that's what makes it taste so exciting. And when I've been brewing Irish coffees in the past, as some of you may know I did, um, what I always used to do is look for the wood. Wood's really important. If you've got good wood, you're all right. So what I used to do is I used to pick uh, sherry casks. So whiskey that had been aged in a sherry cask. So previously, what would have happened would have been that somebody um, would have, you know, aged some sherry then the whiskey distillery would buy the sherry cask and put the whiskey into that cask to bring on that flavor and you tend to get beautiful like dried fruit boozy sherry trifle flavors and it's really really yummy so uh, that's the same principle we've got here you've already got an outstanding coffee in ethiopia yoga chef going into these barrels and then the kentucky bourbon barrel that they're aging this in adds to that flavor and makes it really really sweet really delicious um, and it also just changes the flavor slightly so you've got really wacky boozy whiskey flavors in this um, and it's one of my favorite coffees it's also very well renowned it's won lots of awards it's incredibly popular and it's used in collaboration with a local brewer to help brew one of their best beers and i can't say enough positive things about this coffee it's delicious so i'm just waiting for it to finish brewing now um, it's one of those coffees you wouldn't be able to use in uh, in a competition because in a competition, you have to use coffees which are natural and not kind of uh, flavoured in any way, shape or form. And this would impact that kind of flavouring element of this. So I don't think you'd be able to use this in a, in a competition, sadly. Uh, but it's super delicious and I'm looking forward to it finishing brewing so I can have my little cup. Um, I'm going to use my Barista Life cup, which I got sent in the post. Hello, Ivy. How are you? My daughter's just joined me. How are you, my sweetheart? You just keep doing. Okay, I'll keep doing. Thank you. Ivy says I can keep doing, so I'll keep doing. I'm not showing you my kitchen. I haven't tidied up for you. Crikey. Anyway, this is my Barista Life Cup. I got sent a couple of these in the post uh, by Tim Ridley, who is the editor-at-large of Caffeine Magazine, who said that he thought I'd lived a barista life and therefore I deserved a cup. Thank you, Tim. Much appreciated. Right, we are almost done, and I can almost taste this coffee and tell you how lovely it is. Um, I'm not going to sing at you. This morning I might give you an everything is awesome at the end when we're finished um, but my hope is that I will continue to do little videos just drinking coffee and chatting uh, as long as I have coffee in the house. Right we're almost done here let me flip this back around again. So we just got the last couple of drips coming through now all the water's come out of the tank and if I just slide this over yeah last little bit of water in there now so we're almost done. So I've ground this on my home uh, grinder. Uh, but you could just use pre-ground coffee um, and you'll get a really good result from this. One of the things I'm hoping I'll be able to do as we go past uh, is um, start brewing things with slightly less sophisticated equipment. So I did talk about the other, the other week when I um, brewed with a sieve and a piece of kitchen roll. Uh, that's always good fun. So I'll have a crack at doing that at some point and then uh, we'll see where we get to. We'll see how we get on. Right, I am going to declare that this is done. Now, one of the things I'm always slightly ashamed of is the state of my grinders um, and how messy they can be. So, please don't judge me. Right. Back in the game. Whew. Morning, all. So, here we are. On the first smell, it really does smell super boozy. I mean, 
it's like a cup of whiskey in the morning, but I tell you what, it's a lot better for your mental health than drinking whiskey in the morning. Oh, that's good. You know that really kind of Christmas cakey, boozy thing? That's exactly what we got now. <laughs> I've got a message from my wife saying, where's my cup? Uh, Pete, um, this, should, this will get saved to my story, so feel free to join in and, and watch it a little bit later if you want to. Sorry, it's a bit early this morning. Um, so yeah, super boozy. First sip, just like a cup of hot whiskey. It's, you know, you, the sweetness is like honey. There is a bit of acidity, like lemon, and you've got that flavour of whiskey. This is almost like a hot toddy in a coffee. It's really, really super delicious. Anyway, um, I'm getting hassled to um, bring some coffee upstairs for my wife, um, and I need to go to work. So, everybody, have a lovely day. Uh, remember that the sun is shining, the flowers are blooming, and everything is awesome. And I look forward to making coffee with you tomorrow morning. Everything is awesome!